For 25 years, we have been Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. A new leader behind the wheel driving economic growth in Indiana. We get State Secretary of Commerce David Rosenberg's insights on how he intends to sustain and grow Indiana innovation. New quarterback, new coach, new vibe. The Colts kick off their season at home. The impact on downtown Indianapolis businesses. And Madison County gets in on the solution to helping Hoosiers who don't get enough to eat. How fertile soil and Anderson is playing a major role. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Mary Rachel Redman filling in for Gary Dick. The Indiana Economic Development Corp has been on a roll. The IEDC says 2022 was its sixth straight record-breaking year for economic development investment with over $22 billion in deals, including mega projects like Eli Lilly's planned $3.7 billion manufacturing campus in Boone County and Stellantis and Samsung SDI investing $2.5 billion in an EV components plant in Kokomo, to name a few. To have the corporate flag, Intex corporate flag, planted right here in this field of dreams is going to be a field of reality pretty soon for a lot of uh, Hoosiers that are going to go to work here. And as a new Secretary of Commerce takes office, the hits keep on coming. Like this week in Terre Haute, where groundbreaking was broken for a $1.5 billion lithium-ion battery components plant for Oregon-based Intech, part of a potential deal pipeline estimated to be in the billions of dollars. Earlier this week, Gary spoke with Secretary of Commerce David Rosenberg about his vision for the state's economic development efforts. Governor Holcomb went inside the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, selecting Chief Operations Officer and Native Hoosier David Rosenberg as Secretary of Commerce. I love the state. Uh, I was born in Indiana, down in Jeffersonville, grew up on the south side of Indianapolis, went to IU for undergrad and law school, and cared deeply about um, you know, the opportunity we have for success. Obviously, joining when, when Brad Chambers was secretary over two years ago, implementing the 5E strategy, building and growing the IDC team, the market has responded to that strategy and what the team's offered. And so I think right now, you know, the opportunity that, that Indiana has uh, over these next 16 months is really unlimited. A big move by your predecessor, uh, Brad Chambers, was to uh, create these so-called innovation districts, uh, buying up land. I know you're very involved in that and creating uh, uh, areas where uh, future focused industries can cluster. Uh, uh, first example of that is in Boone County with the Leap uh, Innovation District. That strategy of the uh, these innovation districts, is that one you will continue to push forward? Absolutely. And, and again, that's one that the market has really responded to. You know, as we as we joined almost two years ago, we went around the country to see what other states were doing. We talked with the players making the multi-billion dollar investments around the country to what they needed. And, and it was really two things. One is speed. We say speed is the new incentive. Companies being able to make that investment into a site that is zoned, that has utilities, that has the roadway network, um, they can make that investment and get a return on that investment sooner. And so meeting the speed of the market has been absolutely critical. So sites like Leap are a true investment for the state. They'll pay dividends for decades to come. And as you mentioned, the anchor tenant there being Eli Lilly, $3.7 billion investment the largest single deal in IDC history, the largest single site manufacturing that Lilly has done. Um, and, you know, Dave Ricks on the day of the announcement said without the vision for LEAP, uh, Eli Lilly may not have looked at Indiana. And so really selling that ecosystem to the companies is important with great partnership from President Chang and Purdue up in West Lafayette, down through the LEAP district and into Indianapolis with our partners here at IU and Purdue on the new Indianapolis campus and 16 Tech. Um, really, the vision has come together a lot faster than we even anticipated, uh, but we're, because we listen to the market, we're meeting their speed and demands. David Rosenberg talks about what he describes as a historic pipeline of deals in an extended interview that can be found at InsideIndianaBusiness.com. Well, a new playbook for the Colts as they kick off season 39 in Indianapolis. How a new coach, new quarterback, and new team vibe could impact downtown Indy businesses. For over 20 years, Gary Dick has hosted the Emmy Award-winning Inside Indiana Business, our state's most watched television show reporting on the local economy. His years of dedication are to be commended. 
even as he continues to deliver credible and trustworthy news for Hoosiers. Gary, on behalf of a grateful city, I give you my thanks. Well, it's been 10 years since California-based powerhouse Salesforce acquired cloud marketing firm Exact Target for two and a half billion dollars. In 2000, Exact Target opened in a small office in Greenfield by founders Scott Dorsey, Chris Baggett, and Peter McCormick with only $200,000 in financing. Four years later, the tech company raised $10.5 million in funding from Insight Venture Partners. Back in the day, more than 6,000 companies, including Coca-Cola, Gap, and Nike, used their platform to drive customer engagement and increase sales. And, of course, improve marketing investments. Exact Target co-founder and CEO Scott Dorsey says entrepreneurs benefited from the largest tech sale in Indy's history, and many helped build the tech sector in Indiana. And many of our founders and CEOs that we work with also came from those exact target friendships and relationships. And then just so many people, Gary, have just gone on to have remarkable careers within the tech industry. The number of CMOs and CEOs that started their careers with exact target is likely numbered in the hundreds. And it's just so rewarding to see everyone, you know, their families are growing up and their careers have really blossomed. And, you know, many of them credit exact target as being a launching pad for their career. Dorsey used money from the exact target sale and to launch venture studio High Alpha in 2015 with three other partners. Well, downtown Indianapolis has changed since exact target called Monument Circle home a decade ago. Businesses have come and gone and the skyline is changing. But is that enough to get people back downtown? A downtown, someone would say, has not fully recovered following the COVID-19 pandemic. The Colts home opener is this weekend. Is the season enough to get people back downtown? With perspective, I'm pleased to welcome back to the, to the show Visit Indy Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Chris Gall. Chris, good to see you. You too, Mayor Rachel. Thanks for having me on. I'm here inside Lucas Oil Stadium and one of the suites overlooking the field. And it feels good that football's back in the capital city. I think a lot of people are really, really excited. Anthony Richardson, I think, has got a lot of people excited, too, young quarterback. You know, just, just talk about how football, sports, but really this, this first weekend, is it enough to get people back downtown, do you think? Yeah, we believe so. You know, there's a lot of, you know, the Colts are Indiana's team. And so as they warm up and get ready for the season and we test the equipment here inside the stadium to make sure we're ready to welcome fans, it's another excuse, another reason to come home to the capital city. We know that some people, Fort Wayne, uh, Evansville, throughout the metropolitan statistical area, maybe they haven't been downtown in a while. And this is a perfect excuse to get downtown, whether you have a game ticket or not. Of course, there's pregame activity and all of our bars and restaurants show the TV, uh, show the game. And so it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to get back into the core of, of what we love, and that's live sports in Indianapolis. You know, and, and it's not just the game. A lot of other really fun things going on this weekend, but really for every home game, concerts, Cold City. How will that help your efforts? Sure. So from a tourism perspective, we know that people travel for live events, specifically um, uh, Colts related football. And again, that can be someone from out of state or in state. And Sunday night is the hardest night of the week anywhere in the country, dare the world to fill up hotel rooms. So anytime we have a meaningful event on a Sunday night, it makes our job easier to welcome and invite visitors. Uh, we know, again, that a lot of people within the state even if they don't have that ticket, they want to be part of that Colts action. And so that's why in, in partnership with the Colts and downtown Indy, we have really an entire day of, uh, of Colts related activity outside the stadium and, of course, inside the stadium as well. You know, Chris, we were at Colts camp in August and had a chance to, to talk to Colts marketing executive Roger Vandersnick. Take a listen to, to this soundbite and what he had to say about the upcoming season. Club seats will be sold out. Um, you know, tick, advanced ticket sales here for Grand Park are uh, way above last year. In fact, we've uh, announced six sellouts already for training camp practices. And so you can really start to see some optimism and excitement about where we're headed. That's all good news for you, for the Colts. You know, what, what's your prediction for, I guess, the next six months to a year with, with everything that's going to well, be coming to downtown Indy? Sure. When you have a packed stadium, when you have a packed downtown and full hotel rooms, that helps give confidence to those who haven't been to Indianapolis in a while. 
Uh, we're certainly looking forward to having teams like Cleveland come visit and Tennessee come visit so we can invite even more visitors uh, to the Indianapolis Colts games. Really exciting stuff. Chris, looking forward to it. Hopefully a Colts victory this weekend. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. We're loud and proud, so we hope everyone comes down to uh, support the Colts. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Chris. More Colts inside in our next segment with Indy Star sports columnist Greg Doyle. Passionate, loving, flawed, human. Doyle's take on Jim Irsay, Andrew Luck, Tamika Catchings, and a number of big names in Hoosier sports when we come back. And what's next after Indianapolis-based Good Bones ends its run on HGTV. Dave Linquist gets the lowdown from Two Chicks and a Hammer owner, Mita Starziak Hawk, in this week's IBJ. Here's what's making news around Indiana, brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors, Indiana's 21,000 realtors, the neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. Well, construction underway to transform the historic Union Station in Gary into a state-of-the-art tech hub in northwest Indiana. The Fiber Smart House, an $8 million project, will kickstart a multi-phase effort to renovate the building that sat vacant since the mid-1970s. The Fiber Smart House will have an educational training hub to train the next generation of tech workers and also combat the digital divide, with a network operations center serving as a fiber access point for the entire region. The whole theme here is that there can be a tech community in northwest Indiana. It can exist. All the infrastructure is there. So as opposed to destroying that, I mean, Gary, you, you got to build on it. The hub expected to open in the fall of next year. Well, no Chevy Silverados or GMC Sierras rolling off the line in Fort Wayne, but that could be changing as early as next week. The 4,500 workers at GM's Fort Wayne assembly plant were supposed to return to the job Tuesday, but the company extending the shutdown another week. Fort Wayne's GM plant moving forward, economist Mike Hicks explains. The good news is these usually don't go to strike, and when the strikes come, they usually don't last a long time. If, if there is a strike, of course, you'll see the factory idled, and then there's an immediate ripple effect as orders for parts around the state, and around the country really stop going to these factories. And it's not just GM at risk, it's really anybody who has a UAW contract who doesn't pony up the, the agreement. And so you could easily see the idling of 40, 50,000 workers in Indiana. Big numbers, both in jobs and investment, with a potentially massive economic payoff in Vigo County. In tech, based out of Oregon, breaking ground on the biggest development in Terre Haute history. It's a $1.5 billion investment to build a new battery component manufacturing plant on the former Pfizer property, bringing nearly 650 jobs to the Wabash Valley. One might just call it a match made in Hoosier heaven born in a small town. Brown County's Hard Truth Distilling partnering with Mellencamp Whiskey Company to release a new limited edition whiskey collection celebrating and supporting Hoosier farmers. The first of four whiskeys, Harvest Sweet Mash Rye, released yesterday. And if you're dying to get a little taste, it's now available at Hard Truth Distillery. It's full steam ahead for rail transportation in northwest Indiana. Inside Indiana Business reporter Carly Lanich reporting the new $650 million double track South Shore line has started test runs and could open by the end of the month. And speaking of the region, Inside Indiana Business is now on twice a week in northwest Indiana. You can catch the show now on Lakeshore Public Media Fridays at 8 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 9.30. Something to keep an eye on here in Indiana in the near future, the health of IU legendary basketball coach Bob Knight. It's a dynamic well-known in media circles, and one Indy Star columnist, Greg Doyle, shared with us on this week's Business and Beyond podcast. As Gary found out, Doyle also has strong opinions on the Colts, Pacers, and all things sports. We begin with his take on Bob Knight. Bob Knight's memorable return to IU's Assembly Hall just three and a half years ago. Award-winning Indy Star columnist Greg Doyle, our guest this week on the Business and Beyond podcast, shared insight on the coach's current state of health. 
I'm just telling you what I was told by someone that I think would know that it's, it's happening any day. Yeah. Now, it's been happening, quote, any day for about two months now. So he's just hanging on because that's Bob Knight. He is stubborn and he's, he'll go when he feels like it. Doyle's been with the star for nearly a decade now. He has a unique writing style. His column centered around not just professional sports, but college and high school athletes as well. And everyday Hoosiers, like Purdue superfan Tyler Trent, who lost his battle with cancer in 2019. Sports, as I say, is an excuse to write about people. And and uh, Tyler and I, I wrote about him once back when he was had cancer but was had was beating it. And so I wrote about him once and then may, maybe a second time. And But I stayed in touch with him because he's, he's a great kid. And then when cancer came back, it was no longer about journalism. It doesn't matter whether Doyle is writing a story about Tyler Trent <laughs> or the Indianapolis Colts. He isn't shy about telling it as he sees it. You say Indianapolis Colts, and I think Titanic. The Colts are in trouble. They, they are. But then again, this was supposed to be a the Colts are in trouble kind of season. They've got a, a rookie quarterback, running back, won't play. They don't have a lot of talent. People need to lower their expectations. It's not going to be a good season. Doyle's take on the Indiana Pacers with an interesting comparison to the Colts. In the NBA, there's the haves and the have-nots as far as attracting players. And we live in a have-not city. We all know that. But the Pacers are trying their best. They will be a fun product. Kind of the Colts could be fun. The Colts won't be good. But Richardson, he'll be fun. The yeah. Pacers are striving to be fun. And we asked Greg what pops into his head when we mentioned a few Indiana sports figures. These are just three of them. Tell me your first thoughts when um, you hear the name Jim Irsay. Uh, passionate, loving, flawed human. Andrew Luck. Nerdy, humble, beautiful human being. Tamika Catchings. Hero. So she didn't decide, look at the great run I had. I'm done. No, no. She's using the great run she had to try and make the world a better place. Much more with Indie Star columnist Greg Doyle on the next edition of the Business and Beyond podcast. The number of people facing food insecurity in Madison County is 35% higher than the national average. In the business of health, we'll look at how a new project in Anderson is helping feed the hungry. And we're excited to announce IBJ Media's newest podcast, Off the Record, featuring conversations with Indiana's 250 most influential leaders. Meet the men and women of the Indiana 250 and see a side of them you won't hear anywhere else. This week, host Nate Feltman talks with Brad Chambers about former role as Indiana Secretary of Commerce and his decision to run for office for the first time. Tune in and subscribe at indiana250.com slash podcast. Well, despite being surrounded by farm fields, the number of people facing food insecurity in Madison County is 35 percent higher than the national average. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta tells us how a new project in Anderson is battling local hunger. That's right, Mary Rachel. Community Hospital Anderson is leading the charge to bring more healthy food to the local area. Madison County ranks 12th among Indiana's counties for food insecurity. The hospital just celebrated the grand opening of its newly expanded farm on the hospital's campus, now covering three acres. With much of the county's population living in rural areas that equate to food deserts, the mission of the farm is to grow about 30,000 pounds of fresh produce each year to give to residents for free. Supported by the Community Health Foundation, the farm also has 200,000 bees on site, expected to produce about 200 pounds of honey annually, to sell in the hospital gift shop to support the foundation. The hospital is the largest employer in Anderson and also wants to connect personally with those using the farm. So Chief Foundation Officer Tom Bannon says a brand new community center on site includes a demonstration kitchen. We can give somebody a zucchini, but if they don't know what to do with that zucchini, we haven't helped them at all. So this demonstration kitchen will allow people to come and see cooking classes, participate in those things, learn how to prepare what we're giving them, learn how to like the vegetables and the fruit we're giving them. A lot of people will be like, ah, you know, I don't really like vegetables. Well, come let us teach you some ways that will make you like it and, and, and try it in a different way. 
The farm has a dedicated farmer to grow and harvest the produce. The vision began in 2018 with just two raised beds, then 28 beds, followed by community becoming the first hospital in Indiana to have an in-ground farm on campus. IU has a new plan to link future dentists to potentially owning a business. The IU Kelly School of Business and School of Dentistry are partnering on a dual degree program that helps dental students finish their doctorate degree as well as a master's in business administration. Students will have two years to finish the programs at the same time. A potential answer to the nation's critical nursing shortage, the IU School of Nursing welcoming its largest class in history of future RNs. Nearly 400 students enrolling this fall at IU campuses across Indiana. Roughly 100,000 nurses left the workforce over the past two years. That first story, amazing. It's like going back to the basics, right? Yes. Farming and feeding your community. Exactly. And, and it looks like it's relatively big. It's very big. He says people will come by and say, like, or, uh, say to him, oh, you're gardening. And he says, this is not a garden. And they're <laughs> struck when they drive by it. The size of it, three acres is a lot of acreage, and it really produces, you know, 30,000 pounds of produce. That's a lot of produce. Also, fresh flowers that they can put in patients' rooms, and they're planting fruit trees to add fruit to the produce as well. I mean, it sounds like it's, wow, so amazing, but it's kind of going back a little old school, It right? is very back to the basics, and they have the farming uh, expertise up there to do it, and a farmer really leading the way up there. He's dedicated to this farm year-round. That's all the time we have for this edition of Inside Indiana Business. We hope you enjoy these images of downtown Indianapolis captured by IIB chief photographer Clint Erbacher. Thanks for joining us. And as Gary always says, go out and make it a successful week.